Okay, so here's a first section of a uh, section four, and uh, the level one, which is uh, the fundamental level. And this figure is from the your textbook, uh, seventeen point one, which is the uh, same picture that I actually uh, talked to in the previous uh, video. Uh, this is uh, essentially polyethylene uh, crystal. This is exactly kind of the same kind of uh, one. If you're looking at the CH two. CH2, CH2, a polyethylene chain, they form essentially zigzag motion. Right? And then this zigzag motion of the carbon and carbon, and if you look from the top, right, from the top, that's, this is a structure that you will see as a projection. And as I mentioned before, this one, there is a, a zigzag a plane, okay? So this is a, almost like a zigzag plane that plane is essentially persists this way uh, forming the zigzag uh, uh, plane of the carbon carbon bond and then there's another plane going to the essentially perpendicular to the to do that so that's this is how they form this uh, packing and the zigzag is a very unique to actually for polyethylene. For other polymers, such as a polypropylene, they actually have a different ways of how the chains are uh, chains aligned. Okay, so this is more like a zigzag of carbon-carbon bond, as you can see, and uh, the neighboring one is more like the carbon-carbon bond. Just looks like carbon-carbon bond. Okay, so within the lamella, the chains are extended. And they form this nice packing just like that, and uh, with a spacing value of A and B distance between those center of the zigzag plane. And the once the this distance are defined, uh, then actually the distance from the on th the secondary distance, uh, which is uh, what we call the C. So this is an A and the B, and then there's a C portion that which is uh, coming from the, the along the z-axis, okay? Along the z-axis, you can, you can start to follow the, okay, so the distance between here and uh, the distance between the other one, uh, other, other side of the, this bond and zigzag and another bond. So that's a really the repeating distance between these two and the, and the spatial distance and it has to be measured. And they can be all measured by, this is a, a B, C uh, size, unicell, can be measured by wide angle X-ray scattering. Okay, so wide angle X-ray scattering. In the material science people, they call the XRD, X-ray diffraction um, machine uh, that, that gives a rise to essentially uh, some kind of sharp peaks like this, and uh, they can essentially uh, uh, reveal and uh, define the crystal structures. And the polyethylene is, they actually, uh, you, you, you might have noticed here, uh, polyethylene here, is they form the orthorhombic structures, and orthorhombic structure is essentially the A, B, C domain, uh, the side structure of this repeated uh, the unicell, uh, all have a different length, okay? I guess a simple size is a cubic structure, which is a ABC is, has the same length, and ABC are all different, and then that's a, but it's a perpendicular to each other, 90 degrees. That's a orthorhombic structures. This is a, uh, this is a slide that I have made, and if you look at the slide here, and then I have discussed the polyethylene made from the ethylene, uh, and the uh, uh, monomers, and then if you have a small enough, and they don't form really the, the hard crystal with the larger side of the crystal, as you can imagine that if you have only 30 to 40, they can form the crystal, but not to the extent that is a quite large, uh, robust crystal that can with, offer you the pretty good mechanical properties. And the, the melting point, uh, of this kind of the CH2, CH2 repeating unit structures, actually when they form the uh, lamella crystal, uh, if you have a lot of defects, the melting temperature actually is going down. And then for those, uh, the melting temperature is so low, uh, it is about um, 40 degrees C. Uh, for the polyethylene, if you have a sufficiently large enough molecular weight, 
and the crystal structures are well well uh, well developed. And the melting temperature can go up to 120 to 130 degrees C in their ranges. So this is uh, one of the example that I have shown you, and this is actually the slide, uh, the same picture that you see on the textbook pages about the side view, the top view of the polyethylene has uh, both rhombic structures. So having said that, polyethylene has a zigzag, uh, kind of the CH2, CH2 on the forming a plane. Some polymers actually do not form the zigzag, and this is uh, something that I had uh, talked about in the introduction slide. And so let me show you this uh, structure, the figures that showing first in the figure 17.5. And this is a 3 slash 1 helix found in isotactic vinyl polymers of this kind. And they told me that it is a polyethylene, and a polypropylene, isotactic polystyrene. And even this one, and this one is a little bit hard to imagine if it, this is com must coming from CH2 double bond CH with a CH, double, CH, double bond CH2, right? So what do you call this? This is a uh, diene, butadiene. So this is actually part of the more rubber-like molecule, butadiene. But when they actually make the butadiene, we, we call it, uh, draw this way, you can think about making this one as a sort of polymer uh, reachable group. And this this thing is a, something that's sticking out as a side group, and so this is a, in in a way your nomenclature for this one is should be one two polybutadiene, and then they what did I say is an isotactic so isotactic, and even those right isotactic polypropylene and isotactic polystyrene, and then those are the all different polymers, and they are the one forming this, what they call the 3 to 1 helices. And this is a picture that I, they trying to show it to you on the A, and this one is, of course, is a little hard to comprehend, but if you look at here, <coughs> this is a carbon, and that's a carbon. And I'm going to highlight the carbon with a side group. And this is a CH2, and this is the one, the carbon with a, uh, branching it. This is the normal CH2, and with this, the, something that has a, attached to it. So it's like a CH2, CH with an X, and that's the one that uh, we are showing up here, and those are the one called uh, X on these pictures. And as you can see that, this is being repeated, and this is like to me in my notation, that's the one looks like that. This carbon is, I kind of color that in a fill symbol, and it's repeating like this, okay? So this is like this. So I mean, the, when you look at from the top view, right, from the top, and then what you see here is uh, the picture that they provided on the, on, on, the, on the right, which is uh, very informative. And you can, you can see that the carbon, this is the one that uh, have, have a carbon, the s every other carbon, uh, next carbon is CH2, and the, the other carbon, the other carbon form this essentially three turns. They, to make a one turn here, from here, to make a one turn, you need three uh, monomer units for making a one turn, right? So that's why they call it a helix. So that's the notation that uh, they have it over here. And here I actually, actually kind of find the, some kind of helixes. Looks like a helix. And then so you can think about the X is going, uh, coming out in you know, a regular, uh, regular cases. And there are a, a lot of different kinds of polymers who has a different uh, helical structures. Some of them has a, no, this one has a three, uh, one, uh, three over one. Some of them has a, uh, actually the, uh, the uh, nine over nine over five, and there are there are others. So if you uh, think about the what, how do you call the zigzag? And then there is a zigzag that you can you can call, and it's uh, it's, it's almost like a, if you think about it. If I use this notation, which is a 
I think kind of unique to the polymer field, it's almost like going back and forth, right? Instead of forming your helixes. And you can you can do the argument. I mean, this is an hydrogen coming out. There's an hydrogen coming out. And this is a zigzag uh, for the polyethylene. And people call it, well, that's I can call two making a one turn, right? So you can have this uh, crystal structure just looks like that. Okay, so but I just wanted to get used to the way that people see how these molecules are being, and then eventually whether it is a zigzag, it is a helical, I all simplify to the little line, wiggly line. Okay, and then that this wiggly line is for, for a pack themselves, sometimes with a loop, and this is a they try to make the crystals. And so they, they try to pack themselves, but sometimes uh, if you have uh, some domains and they, they kind of trapped, and so that's, that's what it looks like, okay? And if you have a chain end or if you have a little branches like this, and there will be something that a little like a disruption of the crystal, so that will be shown as a defects on the one. So that's, but at any rate, uh, what is, what I'm trying to uh, kind of convince you here, that this packing of the, really the fundamental unit is how the chains are extended in a form of uh, different kinds of the, uh, I guess a helices in a way. It's a, it's a zigzag or it's a three turn helices. Sometimes actually you have a much more complicated turn uh, helices and there's whole uh, whole information is uh, uh, summarized in the uh, table 17.1 and that has been very kind of a uh, big study of this one. So most uh, crystals are forming the orthorhombic uh, crystal structures, but some of them uh, form the tri uh, triclinic structures, monoclinic structures, and tetragonal structures. It's just a very, very wide uh, uh, com uh, field how those uh, chains are also forming a three-dimensional lattice spaces.